Ladies and gentlemen, move swiftly on and now move to the second beat on show here in Cups today, the Toy Group. As previously, before our toy best of breeds enter the main arena, it is again my pleasant duty to introduce our Toy Group judge. So can I ask you again to give your usual warm welcome to Annette Oliver. Annette is escorted into the ring by Stepping into the ring with Chairman of the Kennel Club, Steve Dean. We have our judge, Annette Oliver. Her first dog was a Labrador, then she had a Chihuahua. I believe it was the Italian Greyhound that captivated her life. She's actually the toy representative on the Kennel, Kennel Club Breed Standards Committee. Organising judges' training and sitting on several important kennel club committees, including the general committee and chairing the kennel club liaison council. And that is what it's all about. And Annette is one of the hard working commentary team here at Crafts. She is well known in the United Kingdom and internationally as a respected judge and toy breed specialist. Proved to award travel certificates in all but two breeds in the toy group. For several years, she has been looking forward to judging. The toy group here at Preps. So again, I ask you to show a warm appreciation to our toy group judge, Annette Oliver. And the ring announcer introducing uh, Annette Oliver to the audience here in the main arena as the toy group comes into the ring. First, the Affen Pincher. Followed by the Australian Silky Terrier. The Bichon Frise. The Bolognese. And the distinctive coat of the Bolognese. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Everyone recognises this one, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. The Monaco Chihuahua. Two varieties of Chihuahua, first the long coat. Followed by, oh, no smooth coats coming in. And there's the Chinese the crested. The national dog of Madagascar, the Coton de Toulier. Followed by the English toy terrier. The Griffon Bruxelles. And a delightful Madame little Griffon Bruxellois. And the Havanese behind that, Greyhound. national dog of Cuba, and the Italian Greyhound. Now the Japanese chin. The distinctive black and white markings of the Japanese chin. The King Charles Spaniel. And now the King Charles Spaniel. Close relative, of course, the of the Cavalier. The little lion dog, the Lurchin. And the spectacular, always, Maltese. The little miniature pincher. The papillon. And the dog with the butterfly ears, the papillon. The pomeranian. The delightful gait of the little pomeranian. And now the pug. And instantly recognisable pug. And as the ring announcer just said, finally, the Yorkshire Terrier. And I hand you over to John McGoldry and Kim Selector Beale for the commentary on the toy group. Thanks very much, Graham. Here we have the toy group, judged by Annette Oliver. There are designated high-profile breeds competing in this group, breeds whose shape can make them prone to health problems. All designated best of breed winners have been checked by the show's appointed veterinary surgeon before competing tonight. So now Annette Oliver has an opportunity to get a first look at this toy breed group. The toy breeds are small companion lap dogs. Many of the toy breeds were bred for this capacity, or some have been placed in the category simply due to their size. They should have friendly personalities and love attention. They don't need a large amount of exercise and some of them can be quite finicky eaters, which I can certainly vouch for. Lovely shot of the Chinese crested there. 
we see before us breeds not only from the United Kingdom <laughs> and the Havanese having fun, but also those from the Americas, Asia, and the Far East, and even Australia too. The charming face of the little there Griffon Bruxelles. Well, you've got to remember some of these dogs will look a little alarmed when the camera comes close like that because to them the camera lens looks like a big predatory eye and those that have a tendency towards guarding more than others may just look and think goodness me what is that there oh what are you but my word it does allow us to get some magnificent shots doesn't it there's the maltese Little Papillon using those ears. Pomeranian unfazed by anything. So Annette Oliver now going back to the table to see her first dog. And this is the Affen Pincher. Champion Banana Joe and Tani Kazari, five year old dog known as Joey. They've come from Massachusetts in the USA, bred by Mika Kujamas, handled by Ernesto Lara in the ring. Over a hundred CCs won in America, this kennel, but this is his first CC in the UK, and to win it at Crufts, that really counts. Sometimes called the black devil. Aff the Affen has the most characteristic face. You'll see it when it comes towards you, like a little monkey face. Very <laughs> cheeky, beautifully presented, this one. Rough coated, black, or they can have little shades of grey. Small, sturdy, and confident. Just look at the confidence in the way this dog's showing itself. There's that little monkey face. That's going to greet all comers and be cheeky with it. You can see it. Just a pause and then back to the judge to show to best advantage. The little Affen Pincher. Now it's the turn of the Australian Silky Terrier. As his name implies, the dog originated in Australia. It was one time, one time it was known as the Sydney Silky. Although he's in the toy group, the Australian Silky Terrier isn't a quiet little lap dog at all. His background is a mixture of Australian and Yorkshire Terriers and retains many of the qualities of those breeds. Friendly and independent, smart, curious, energetic, Affectionate, and as you'll see when it gets on the move, lots of stamina. Keenly alert and active personalities, they are, there are even references... These dogs were bred as household pets. This is a long, glossy coat, and it's very easy to look after, believe it or not. Just a few minutes daily brushing with a quick comb, and the parting down the back of here is lovely. That's sufficient to ensure this well-groomed appearance, moving, look at that, happy little dog. Actually, it's a bit tired, it was a yawn. Let's have a long day. Johnny boy, three years old, that dog. The smart outlines of the Bichon Frise. This one with an amazing tally of 44 challenge certificates. Champion Pamplona Bring Me Sunshine is just three years old, known as Eric at home, owned by Michael Code, who also bred him and is handling in the ring tonight. Smart little dog with that black pigment and those beautiful dark eyes set in that very characteristic head trim. Close coated. Pigment important, that lovely plume of a tail carried over the back. And always happy and lively on the move. Michael, consummate handler, getting the best out of his dog. And the dog, of course, one that knows the show ring inside and out, showing himself beautifully. Now we're looking at the Bolognese on the table. Von Casa Brich, oh, I can't say, Brichladic 
the Bolognese comes from up near Edinburgh. <laughs> Charming, intelligent breeder dog. Hails from the centre of northern Italy. Similar in style to the, the Bichon types, but has a non-shedding flocked coat. So you need a lot of regular grooming to keep this looking neat and tidy, but it doesn't get trimmed. Occasionally you might get a little apricot shading, just a hint of it there on, on, on this one, but not, uh, not really. Sometimes it appears on the ears there, but otherwise the colour is absolutely white. It's a dog that enjoys its long walks as well as indoor or garden games. It seems to have been regarded as a very acceptable gift in fashionable circles to provide this dog as a present to someone. Nice simple stride. Miltree Constellation is a three-year-old Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, owned and bred by Peter and Ruta Taus, handled by Peter in the ring this evening. Ten cc's, winning best of breed at Crufts, a huge achievement, and look at that soft, melting expression. No wonder these are one of the most popular dogs in the toy group. A proper toy spaniel, this is a strong little dog, profuse coat, this a Blenheim with that wonderful rich red and white, of course they can come in ruby or black and tan as well, equally striking. Lovely skull shape, framed by those long ears, very important in the breed. But when you see this dog move, strong and balanced. Lovely tail carriage there, waving that plume of a tail. Easy gait. This is a lovely understated performance. And this dog beat 347 others today. That's some achievement. So there are two varieties of Chihuahua. This is the long coat. They both uh, have their special attractions, equally easy to keep clean and well groomed. The origins of a Chihuahua are debated, but it's thought they may have come originally from China, but uh, most people seem to think they came from the Mexican state of Chihuahua when he first came into prominence way back in the 1890s. They're described as cheeky with a saucy expression. Levian, no doubt that he thinks he's a big dog. Like many of these toy breeds, they really do think that. He's, uh, makes him easy to take anywhere, highly intelligent, easily trained, makes an absolutely delightful companion. Happy to be a much-loved lap dog and also a good this house a dog. They'll announce the approach of strangers. I'm not saying they're good guard zero. dogs, but they'll let you know someone's coming. Lovely little performance there. The smooth chihuahua, and what a handsome little collar that is. Essentially the same in structure, shape and form as the long coat Chihuahua, a very different coat, obviously. Judge feeling, construction and particular breed points, the head very characteristic with the shape of that skull and the set of the eyes giving them a very appealing expression. Wide set ears, held erect, And the same thing, a fantastic clip movement. Look at the reach in front there. This is a little dog, but driving from behind, reaching in front, leaves you in no doubt that there's a bit of athleticism going on there too. <laughs> and 
a big dog in a very little package. I think the movement's a joy to watch, lovely muscles on those rear, on that rear end. <laughs> and now Annette Oliver's got the opportunity to look at the Chinese Crested. Now these really are unique little dogs. They come in two varieties, the hairless and the powder puff. The hairless have this crest of hair on the head, as you can see there, uh, and the plume on the tail. Most attractive, this is Vanatonia, uh, known as Bruno, actually. It's like 13 months old, it's a dog. The owner's Tom Isherwood, comes from Somerset. The powder puff variety is uh, covered entirely with a veil of long, soft hair, but this one doesn't. Mixture of colours can be plain or spotted, as this one is. Definitely a breed for the connoisseur. It's difficult to point out where they come from. They said they were owned by families of the Han Dynasty of China, developed at, the, at that time as guardians of treasure houses and in a larger, heavier form as hunting dogs. You can't really believe it when you see that one. But look at that lovely trotting movement. Beautiful to see. You see that lovely plume tail at this point as well. And a nice stance. Now here we have a bit of an international mix. The national dog of Madagascar, the Coton de Toulier, and this one's come all the way from Finland to compete at Crufts. Bred by Brigitta Daman, handled by Mika Iveskoski. Known as Romy at home, that coat is very characteristic. There are actually very few of these left in Madagascar now, but all over the world. The make and shape of the dog, the wonderful coat for the show ring, has meant that they've been developed to a high degree elsewhere. Judge feeling the texture of the coat there. Very characteristic. It's also supposed to be a non-shedding coat as well, rather like the poodle and the miniature schnauzer. I like the way you say supposed to be. <laughs> There's always a little. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful. Wonderful be careful. flowing movement. Happy tail and happy face coming towards you. The pigment against the white coat, very characteristic. Well, this is a 19-month-old dog called Alfie. It's the English Toy Terrier, which is actually the oldest of Britain's native toy breeds. It used to be known as the miniature Black and Tan Terrier prior to the 1960s. But that would suggest it could be any terrier type in Black and Tan, so they changed the name to the English Toy Terrier. They can trace their history back at least as far as the 16th century. In the Georgian periods, they were used to help flush foxes in the rat fighting pits, but it's as a town dog that the breed really became popular and the late 1800s saw a selective breeding program. They do make charming, intelligent, non-aggressive companions and this smooth, very glossy coat requires minimal care. And after a long day, seeing these little dogs trotting around the ring like they're still high stepping at the front with a nice reach, one, one, Very attractive little dog, the English Toy Terrier. First best of breed today, this one. <laughs> this is the Griffon Bruxellois, bred by Howard Ogden, handled in the ring by Barbara Murray, who also owns him. His name's Oz, he's two years old, black and tan. That head should appear a decent size in comparison to the dog. Rounded, but in no way domed. Quite wide between the ears. Judge feeling the shoulder placement and looking at the nature of the body. Another look at the head, so characteristic in this breed. Green was crossed with parts in the late 1890s, then doing smooth griffon came along. We should see free movement 
with good drive from the rear. Tiny little dog, but should leave you in no doubt that it's a bit of a powerhouse. They have huge hearts, not nothing better than snuggling up to their family members, whilst often displaying an air of self -control. Rough coated, harsh and wiry. Ladies and gentlemen, one, two, eight, four, the best of three winning reform boosters. And stop and charm the world with that little face. And this is the Habanero, the Havanese national dog of Cuba. He's a four-year-old dog called Goy, owned by Sheila Walker from Derbyshire. It's thought that these dogs came to Cuba where they were the playthings of the wealthy via Spanish colonists or Italian trade. It sounds quite likely, doesn't it? It's a lively toy dog, not in any way delicate at all. As you can see uh, with uh, Annette's hands on him there, uh, it's a good size. Well able to stand up for himself in boisterous play. And this coat that uh, she was feeling there has to be long and soft. In fact, the, the, the breed was at one time known as the Havana Silk Dog. And it shouldn't be cut, the coat shouldn't be cut with scissors at all. This is just combed out, brushed out. Many colors allowed from white through cream to black, blue, uh, silver, and even chocolate. Three, seven, eight. The graceful lines of the Italian Greyhound. This one owned, bred, and handled by Kay Rutter. Known as Kevin at home, he's just 20 months old. A dog with an ancient history can be a little aloof with strangers. Look at that glorious expression. Large eyes. And that lovely long head by comparison. And very characteristic action. The gait said to be high stepping and free. Ladies and gentlemen, number one. Fine four, coat four, on two, supple skin. The dog almost looks as if it was fashioned out of pure grey porcelain, doesn't it? The well, Italian greyhound. And of course, this was Annette's uh, favourite breed. It was the one that she dealt with. So it's got to be a good one to impress her. Now this is the Japanese chin, an oriental aristocrat in demeanor and manner. It's a dog, two and three quarters years old. He's called Woody. They come from Worthing in West uh, Sussex, handled in the ring by Tony Allwall. This is a dog that uh, is called the Japanese chan, Chin, but it's thought that it came from China originally. Some part of the world he's known as the Japanese Spaniel. And although he's a dainty little dog, but these again, they're not particularly delicate. Very bright and intelligent, very stylish and extrovert. You could uh, describe that look there as one of astonishment doesn't look always look surprised to be where it is but charming i, I think really beautiful they do tend to uh, the profuse black and white or red and white coat sheds quite a lot so they leave telltale marks on your furniture King Charles Spaniel, this one Theo, owned and bred by Sheila Waters and Joyce Robbins, handled by Tanya Island in the ring. And you can see the obvious relation to the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, but on the finer points of the breed, the King Charles is quite different. This beautiful animal has 19 cc, so a good long show record. And this one a tricolour, the white background with black patches and tan points. 
Long, silky, straight coat. Slight waves allowed, as you can see on the feathering there. Head shape so characteristic with that lovely expression. And a characteristic, free, active and elegant gait. Lovely tail. Beautiful feathering on this one in lovely condition for the Crufts group. On the table now, it's the little lion dog, the Lochen. Obscure origins to this breed. European dog, it's thought. The breed's home country is listed as France, although they've been established in Spain and Germany as well as France since the 1500s, so a very ancient breed. Attractive, silky textured coat in a variety of colors. The manner in which it's trimmed with a lion-like mane over the hair in the forequarters and the hair of the hind quarters are clipped short has given rise to his other name, Little Lion Dog, as I've said. One of the sturdiest of the toy breeds. Large, dark eyes, which you just see there. They have an irresistible expression, I think. Blessed with a very affectionate nature. Some have been successful in obedience and agility competitions, would you believe? Active and playful. Very suitable and popular family, family pet. And a very nice One, movement six, there again. Eight, powerful five, drive four, in the nine, back end, leading it on. Lovely. This has got to be a main contender in the group tonight, I think. The Maltese, this one champion, Benetone Gold Boots. Boots is four years old. Handled by Sarah Jackson in the ring, owned by Rosemary. 17th challenge certificate today and coming from a long line of Maltese bred by the Jacksons who always stand a good chance in the group. The quality of the dog, the coat, the preparation, the combination is what makes a really successful exhibitor. Good breeding, excelling in the points of the breed standard and then putting a dog in the ring in this sort of condition. With the Maltese, the lovely black pigment against that crisp white coat, flowing, fantastic movement for such a tiny little dog. Just look at that powering towards you. Like many of the toy breeds, this might be a small dog, but you get a lot of dog for the package. This is Rory, a four and a half year old dog, a miniature pincher. Pincher is the German word for terrier, though these dogs may well not have gone to ground. They're quite long legged. Certainly the, uh, the large pincher is, but the, the min pin here developed in Germany from uh, the large smooth coated variety. The miniature pincher has been bred for hundreds of years and appeared in the form we know now around about 1915. Smart and clean in outline. Lustrous short coat, sturdy, compact in the body, almost square, has a unique sort of hackney gait. Now look at this. You see that lovely, it's not that far reaching at the front there, beautiful forelegs. That is very nice to see. Lively and high spirited, stylish, friendly, ideal size for a small home. Dave is a four-year-old dog bred by Carol Lees, owned by Elise van der Molen and Sharon Newcomb from Webster, Texas, Santa Fe, New Mexico, USA. Handled by Sharon Newcomb in the ring. 
characteristic head shape of the papillon who derives his name from those wonderful butterfly ears. Profuse coat. It's abundant, should be flowing, but without too much undercoat, long, fine, and silky. The head slightly rounded between those ears, which gives the most wonderful expression. Light, free-flowing, positive action. Ears cocked backwards in attention. So full of character. The little papillon. Was not confirmed following the dog's veterinary check, and therefore the breed will not be represented in the group tonight. I'm really sad to say that the Pekingese Best of Breed Award was not confirmed following a veterinary check, so the breed isn't represented in the group tonight. So we move on to the Pomeranian. Though in Britain it's listed as the country of development of the Pomeranian, uh, Britain is listed as that. This is a Spitz-type dog. Believe it or not, descended from much larger sledge-hauling dogs from the Arctic. I mean, you can see the, the shape, but uh, certainly not in the size. Bred from the German Spitz before becoming known in the UK in 1870, Queen Victoria had one in the kennels that helped to popularise the breed. Dainty little extrovert, smallest of the Spitz-type dogs. This is a light-hearted, active, sweet-tempered and affectionate dog. If you look at the head there, lovely foxy sort of style about it, with this abundant standoff coat. Very short barrel body, well covered with the coat. Just gives the impression of being a, a total ball of fluff. Although his undercoat is soft, his outer coat texture is not fluffy. It requires regular attention to keep it looking as good as this one's looking in the ring today. But I think that is a very cute movement. Very nice little, little dog. Five-year-old dog called Dreamer. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> what a wonderful name that is. Champion pugnacious provocateur, Mac. At home with Louise Brooks Lowe, owner, handler, and breeder. Six cc's. This little pug, the judge is looking at that characteristic head shape. They have a large head, round but never apple-headed, beautiful expression, and that lovely black mask on this fawn. Hands over the body, looking for the length of ribs, the strength of thigh, the construction of the dog, and of course that coat. Fine, smooth, soft, short and glossy. Very intelligent expression a real characteristic of the breed. They have great charm. Short and cobby body, wide chested, but should still be free in movement. Slight roll of those hindquarters actually typifies the breed. And that wonderful little tail curled over the back. The pug. Last in the group here is that Yorkshire Terrier, known as Peter, three-year-old dog. Comes from the Czech Republic, owned by Alina and Veronika Bistrianska. Handling in the ring, it's uh, Veronika. The Yorkshire Terrier is a show dog in all its glory with this beautiful coat right down to the ground. They really do draw the eye whenever you see them. When you keep them as a pet, they're unlikely to look this fine because uh, the time for keeping it, the coat in that sort of condition is uh, uh, very long indeed. 
The Yorkie comes from the same area as uh, the Airedales, first seen around the 1850s. The old black and tan terrier is actually behind the uh, breeding of the Yorkshire, together with other breeds such as the Maltese and the Skye Terrier, and you can see the influence of those in there as well. He does have terrier-like qualities, nice little hunting instinct, and that can be shown that it's hunting for a toy in the house or for a rat in the garden. He enjoys all sorts of games, appreciates a good walk, hardy character, often pampered, but doesn't have to be. There's a real dog in there. Spectacular presentation always. His lovely whiskers, kicking the back legs back as it trots around the ring. So that's our toy group, and now Annette Oliver has to pick her shortlist. What is she going to choose? Taking a final look at all those best of breeds. The toy group always savagely competitive. A lot of very popular breeds here. Lovely shot of the Chinese crested there. The cotton de Toulier. This is always the, the moment for the judge to get just that last look. She'll have a pretty good idea of what she's going to have in her shortlist, but she just needs to check that she's not missed anything, not felt that she's overlooked anything. There's a second chance to have a really nice walk along there, leisurely. Take your time. It's a great moment for a judge to be judging here at this magnificent dog show. Nice group to be judged. So, a shortlist. Coming straight down to the front end of the line, what's going to be pulled out here? She likes the Affenpinscher. How could she not leave the Affenpinscher after that performance? And the Bichon. Oh, missing it. Oh, what's she picking there? She's got the smooth, smooth. Chihuahua, and uh, she's got the Chinese Crested as well. The little character of a gr uh, Griffon Bruxellois. The Japanese chin. Japanese chin coming out there. And the King Charles, uh, the Papillon coming out there, the Pomeranian and the Pug. Nine in her shortlist. Well done, Annette. I did say as they were going round uh, that, you know, the, the, her breed was the Italian Greyhound, so it would have to be a good one for her to pick it, and she hasn't picked it. That doesn't mean it wasn't a good one, but it wasn't as good as some that she's known. And that's always the criteria. The judge is judging each dog against its own template. Now she's going to send them round, a chance to show their movement again, not just their movement, but also their performance in the big ring tonight. Now this is five-year-old Joey, the Atom Pincher. And what a performance that is. Just look at the confidence in that little dog. Hey, you, I'm the group winner. Ah, but you can't have it all your own way, little Joey. The Bichon Frise is going to put in every bit as good a performance. Michael's having to run to catch up. He is, isn't he? <laughs> the little smooth coat. Full of personality. <laughs> it's a slow walk for these little the Chinese <laughs> Because the Chinese crested. Oh, not for this. This is an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful ears. Framing that elegant face. The little the Griffon, Griffon Bruxellois. Quite sensibly says, I'm not going to walk quite as far as the others. I do think they're cute. And the Japanese chin. The Japanese chin. I love the black and white markings. I find them spectacular. But look at that expression. Isn't that lovely? And the Papillon. Two, zero, five, seven. Here comes the Papillon. Six, 
serious consideration from our group judge. And the Pomeranian. The charm of the little Pomeranian. Walking in a straight line at the moment instead of turning little circles. It is a ball of fluff, isn't it? I mean, j they're just so cute. Lovely to watch. And here's the pug. Bringing up the rear, but not remotely concerned about that. I'm going to put in my own performance. Those are our finalists. Our group judge has seen them all move again. The boards will come out. And then she'll make her selection for our second finalist for Sunday's Best in Show competition. And another nice look along the line. Just confirming what she thinks. Doesn't make a mistake. Nice group of dogs. Beautiful balance of the crested. At the end of such a long day, these dogs are amazingly alert. Oh, look that's at that. That's gorgeous. Beautiful that gorgeous? outline. Little Pom, full of confidence. <laughs> And last but not least, the little pug. Cobby outline there. Decision time, Annette. Your boards are out. What are you going to pick? Won't surprise me if it's the Papillon. I thought it looked spectacular in that last little lineup. But let's wait and see. Oh, it's going to the pop. Pomeranian, well, it gave some performance there. This is a five-year-old dog called Dreamer, owned by Frederick Nielsen and Christina Burleson. They come all the way from Schobel in Sweden. Handling in the ring by Michael Nielsen. And the pug is getting the group two. But our Swedish visitors have taken the group. Group three the goes Bichon. to the Bichon Frise. Michael Code with champion Pamplona bring me sunshine. So one way or another with Michael and uh, Jeff Korish, it's been quite a day. Jeff judging the utility group and Michael with their dog there. And finally, it's the Pomeranian. The and a big but there's our group winner, the toy group winner for 2012, Belliver Unexpected Dream, Dreamer, the little Pomeranian. Of course, I said uh, the Pomeranian was coming out at the back end, I knew it was at the front. This, of course, was the Papillon was group four. Four-year-old Dave. Lovely selection. The winner of the toy group, 2012, the Pomeranian. Presentation party coming out. So we have a Swedish victor going is, uh, through the best in show on the Sunday. It's his favourite trick, running around in circles. Are you going to do it again? Dreamer? My word. Lovely. Mo Look. Oh, no, that. I'm bored now. Oh. Right, <laughs> I can just we go won home the group now? Yeah, let's go home. <laughs> Don't want to do anything else until Sunday. Feet up on the sofa. Thank you very much. And not forgetting, group two goes to the pug. 
Yes, Champion Mark. pugnacious provocateur. <laughs> Wonderful name. Pug pugalicious, I think you'll find it is. Pugalicious provo provocateur. Is it pugalicious? Yes. Oh, goodness me, yeah. that's even better. Yeah. Good name. Nearly two years old, this little dog. Bichon Frise taking group three. And the little Papillon group four. All the way from the USA to take a group place at Crufts, a tremendous achievement. Of the toy group, Crufts 2012, the But there's our group winner. Toy group taken by the Pomeranian with a sparkling performance, a delightful little dog who will go forward to the Best in Show competition on Sunday. And so that brings us to the end of the main performances in the arena on this first day of Crufts 2012.